this morning. Is this our train? This is the train. Hi. You might be wondering why we're in the car. Funny story. When I put everything down to go talk to you guys and tell you that we're about to get on the train and go to New York City, I left my phone on the seat. What? And we had to get out of the train at the next stop. Run back to this train station. We caught an Uber back here. Stop messing up your sweater. And I had to grab my phone. So now we're taking an Uber to the city and we're sitting in our car until the Uber gets here because I, I done messed up. I woke up on time still missed the first train and then we had to get off the train that we were supposed to take now because i left my phone so we have an awful start to the morning but we're gonna rally we're gonna make today great right we're gonna have yeah. a great day we're gonna have Seriously. an amazing day after you missed the first train, i was like nothing bad could happen you yeah. know yeah and then you left your phone i was like bruh yeah yeah i am the problem in our family i am i am the issue i understand that i i completely I take full responsibility for that. But we're still gonna have a great day. <laughs> yes. We finally made it into the city. <laughs> finally. We are determined to have a good day. It's been rough, but we're here and we're gonna have a good time. Excited? Yes. <laughs> wow, it's really, really rich. Rockefeller Center, but it is packed. When I tell you it is packed, it is packed like sardines. So I got our thumbnail and we're gonna skedaddle because I cannot do this anymore. I do wanna hit the bookstore. I wanna go to the Strand and the biggest Barnes and Nobles in the world, which just happens to be down the street. So I'm really excited to do that. For Christmas, streets are shining with sparkling lights. We'll have so much fun here at Christmas. Stars will make the night so bright. Cherish every good thing at Christmas. Kiss me under the mistletoe. Light the fireplace and roast some chestnuts. Cause it's Christmas time. Look, the snow is falling down It's covering the town And kids are all waiting for Santa Claus I found some really cute pins I got rainbow colors. Muji has the best pins. I also got a box of the black ones because these are the ones I use the most. And I always give them out to people and they never give them back to me. So now I got supplies. I also got this for my diffuser. And it's yuzu and it smells so good. I'm very happy. I'm gonna look around a little bit longer, but then I'm ready to go, kind of hungry. Santa Claus When you hear the sound
silver bells ringing You know reindeer are on the way Write some cards and wrap all the presents Let's enjoy the holiday Come and join me, it's time for Christmas Let the atmosphere warm your heart We'll have so much fun here at Christmas Time for laughing, time for praying We love the holidays Look at that Amazing! never been so happy and tired in my entire life. I found some really great books and I'm only on the third floor and I already have a cart.
found so many books and I am exhausted. This place is so freaking big and so packed. It's my fault for coming on a Saturday, but oh my God, there's literally people everywhere and I'm ready to go home. What a day. I had so much fun. That Barnes and Noble was like the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I've never seen such a big bookstore. It was so beautiful and it was like kind of old style New York. It was just, it was magical, absolutely magical. But do you want to know something? I wore my watch the whole day and though the New York parts are probably going to be like five minutes in total in this video, we walked. Guess how many miles we walked first before I say it. We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. Also, like and subscribe. We'll put it in the comments. Okay, you ready? We walked over seven miles yesterday. Wow. Over 16,000 steps just walking around New York City. Like, what? That is insane. That's why my feet hurt so bad. But anyway, I had a great time. The food was delicious. It was chaotic, but so much fun. And it was so busy. Ugh, it was insane. That's why I'm glad I don't live in New York City, but I'm glad that I'm super close to New York City. Anyway, let's go through all the goodies I got. First, we have to do Muji. I love Muji. It's a Japanese store. It's kind of like a Japanese Ikea. They have a bunch of stationery, clothing, food, uh, skincare, stuff like that, but their stationery is top tier. And I am a stationary girl. I love using like really pretty stationery because it just makes writing notes and studying just a little bit more fun. So here's what I got. I showed my sister and my brother all the stuff I got and they did not care. So I need you to pretend for me, okay? First, I got these little candies. They're yuzu candy and it's delicious. It's like yuzu and kumquat, absolutely delicious. I started eating them immediately. Now I'm gonna put one in now. Amazing. Next up, how to get some chopsticks. They have really cute chopsticks. Look at that, pack of five. And then, okay, these are my absolute favorite pins. It's the .5 ones with the little clicky thing. Yeah, get into that sound. ASMR. So nice, I got a pack of them because I run out of them all the time. I use them all the time and they're the absolute best. These are the ones. Then, I got the same clicky pins but colors so I can make all my notes really pretty. Look at that. The only thing is, there's no pink in here. So that's a bummer. But we move on. I got a pencil case. Look at how pretty this pencil case is. Look at it. Don't look at my thumb. Look at that. Ah. Ah. Uh, yeah, and in here I have a bunch of highlighters. And then I have some pens that don't have the clicky top because we like variety. I also got a little pencil sharpener. Ta-da. The last two things are a makeup spatula. So I can do that and it can look even more flawless. You love to see it. And then I got this essential oil for my diffuser. I got the yuzu smell. I love yuzu. It smells so good. So I got that. Can't wait to use it. Now, for what you're actually waiting for, all the books I got. Up first is this beauty here. This is The Secret Diary of Hendrik Groen, 83 and 1 fourth years old. This cover is the thing that literally sold me. As soon as I walked onto the third floor, it was the first thing that caught my eye, and I was like, I have to get it. This is about an old guy who is refusing to let his age define him, and he creates this club. It's called Old But Not Dead Club. I love that. I hope that I have a club like that when I'm old. And it's all about living your life to the fullest, and then he kind of finds romance as he gets older. It kind of reminds me of A Man Called Ove. It just sounds really, really interesting, and I can't wait to read it. This one right here is for Adam. Adam Linscap always comments on all of my videos. He's been a supporter since like I had 10,000 subscribers and he keeps telling me to read a manga and I promised him by the end of the year I was going to buy a manga. So here you go, Adam. This is my manga for the year. I promised you. I kept my promise and I'm going to read this as soon as possible. I got Jujutsu Kaisen because I'm actually currently watching the show and it's so freaking good and my brother got me into the show and he really likes it too so we're going to share this. Ooh, the next one's a goodie. This is A Certain Hunger. Look at this gosh darn mother freaking cover. 
Can someone say Patrick Bateman? Like what? She is eating a human heart. I didn't want to say it, but that's what it's looking like. Anyway, this book is about this chef. She's like committed to her craft. She absolutely loves what she does. And she loves finding unique flavors and things like that. But one day when she accidentally kills someone, her curiosity gets the better of her and she decides to taste him. And then we just follow her cannibalism ride. So I don't know, it's kind of nuts, but I'm here for it. Ooh, this is Babel. This is by R.F. Kuang. I already have the Poppy War and Yellow Face and have not read a single book by her yet, but I have them all now. And this one is apparently really, really good. I just know she's gonna be an author that I fall in love with. I just need to get around to actually reading one of her books. For sure, we are reading this next year. Hopefully this, Yellow Face and Poppy War, but we'll see, but definitely this one. This is a book that Jack Edwards read and said was really good, so you know I had to get it. And I haven't seen it at my local Barnes and Noble. And then when I saw it here, I was like, oh, I have to get it. It's so small. I definitely think that I can finish it, maybe even this year. So this is a book about this woman who has an infant daughter who begins to get sick, so she quits her job to take care of her infant daughter. And as she's taking care of her daughter, she slowly, like, goes mad <laughs> and she starts to hear voices and see people that aren't actually there and so her husband sends her to a psychiatrist and they try to help her out and it just follows that story and it's really really highly regarded and i'm really excited to read this one <gasps> the idiot oh my gosh i've heard so many good things about this this was written in like 2018 i believe so i'm kind of late but it won a pulitzer prize so you know it's good this is supposed to be a witty coming of age story about a girl who goes to college meets a bunch of different unique people and then she follows that story outside of college and how she grows into the writer that she becomes and how she discovers first love and things like that so i'm very very excited to see this i see this literally every single time i go to barnes and noble and i just never pick it up i don't know why i think i kind of confused this book with another book that looks very simple like this like the cover and it's pink and everything and i confuse it with another book i can't remember Remember what the name of it is but I do know I want to read that other book as well so I'm glad that I finally got at least one of them next up is ooh Neil Gaiman the ocean at the end of the lane this guy also wrote let's see if I can find it oh Coraline this guy also wrote Coraline now me and my sister love Coraline that movie is so good but I've heard incredible things about Coraline so when I went I was like oh my god this place has to have it and this was the last copy on the shelf can you believe it? Crazy, just absolutely crazy. And then when I was getting this book, the person who was helping me was like, oh, if you like this, you're gonna like him in general and you should get this book because this is another good book by him. So I got both, very excited. I even think I can read this by the end of the year. I think I'm gonna try to do like a sprint and read a bunch of short books before the end of 2023. So wish me luck. Book number nine is <gasps> A Molecule Away From Madness. Now, I've never heard anything about this book, but I was in the science section. I just love science books. I don't know why, they just make me so happy. I like hearing other people so passionate about something that I'm passionate about. And this book is basically about a bunch of random cases where people are normal one day and then absolutely psychotic the next. And you get to play like detective to see what happened and you get to follow the author as they follow what happened to them chemically. So it's about brain chemistry and like how your body changes and how fascinating it is. And I don't know, it just sounds really, really interesting. I've never even heard of this author, but as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have it. Now, this is a book that I believe that Jack Edwards also recommended, but I've been seeing it everywhere and it's kind of older, but I've been wanting to read this book for the absolute longest time, like for real. I know I say that about a lot of books, but this one I've been definitely wanting to read for a while. It's about two sisters who were close at first and then they started to hate Hate each other a little bit until one of the sisters gets cancer and then that sickness brings them together even though they kind of hated each other at one point they slowly start developing that relationship again through her sickness and it follows that story as they become young adults on their own so not only are they figuring themselves out but they're figuring out this relationship trying to navigate this cancer this serious diagnosis all at the same time so i'm very interested in this i didn't realize how thick it is though it is a very thick girl. Let me see. Oh, it's not too bad. It's less than 400 pages, so it's not crazy. Oh my God. I just noticed something. Look at the cover, right? Look at the side. They're holding hands, and that's the other sister. That is genius. I love this. Yeah, I'm excited to read this. Now, we have one more left. <gasps> I finally got Legendborn. Finally, 
Now, out of all the books, I think I'm the most excited about this one. This has a black main character written by a black author, and it's a fantasy novel. Does it get better than that? I don't know. So this one is about this girl. She's trying to get away from her family because her mom passed away recently and she just wants to dissociate. So she goes off to college, but on her very first day there, she sees like some magical attack. And then the guy who was like involved in that attack is trying to wipe her memory, but it doesn't work. And that reveals that she's kind of magical as well. And it also reveals something about her mother's death. So she tries to use this information to really find out what happened to her mom. And through following that journey, she gets closer to this guy as well as like figuring out her own magic and trying to see how that relates to her mother's death and things like that and if she wants to be a part of this legend born society at school so it sounds so interesting this book has been talked about so many times by different not only booktubers but also on goodreads i've heard so many great reviews on this and this is something i definitely need to read just because of the representation because it's fantasy and i'm starting to get into fantasy and i've just heard so many great things about it so those are all the books we got. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have eleven books that I got from the biggest Barnes and Nobles in the world. But you know what? I didn't just get eleven books. I also got one other book. However, I gave it away. Let me tell you the story. It's absolutely nuts. You will not believe me. When we were heading out of New York City, we always take the train back to New Jersey. And when I was getting on the train, it was completely packed. I was with my family and we had so many bags together. I didn't realize how packed the train was. So we put all our bags, we had like five different bags, big heavy bags, and we put it in the chair. And then some lady was walking by and she just asked us like, can you move your bag so I can sit down? And it was like kind of jarring. We were like, okay, but I understand the train was really packed and I didn't want to be rude. So we moved our bags and she sat down. Then my brother being my brother, side note, every time we go out to film a video, when I take my family to go with me, he always stops and tells people that I am a YouTuber. It is the most humiliating thing ever. And he like, we have these business cards that we like sometimes leave at different tables and things and he gives them out to people and it is so, so cringy. I hate it so much. I always want to run away and he won't stop. He, he does it to like be funny and also he's really proud of me. So that's cool, I guess, but like stop embarrassing me. So I say all that to say he did that to this lady. And then she started talking about all the books that she's read. And then she told me about all the books she loves and guess what books she absolutely loved. Eleanor Oliphant! At that very moment, I fell in love with this woman. I fell in love with this woman. I could not believe it. We had a little bit of a rocky start because of how like she sat down and stuff and we were like all like what? But oh my god, after that, for the entire train ride home, for like 30 minutes, we talked about books. I went through all the books that I got. And then when we got to the other book that I don't have with me, it was Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Faney. She said that this is a book she's been meaning to read for the longest time. And by this time, we already built a rapport. I was already convinced that she was going to adopt me. She doesn't know this yet, but she's going to adopt me eventually. Um, we got to that book. She was like, oh, I really want to read this. And I was like, okay, well, do you have it? And she was like, no. And I was like, well, you do now. And it was a signed copy from Alice Faney too. So if she doesn't adopt me now, I don't know what else I have to do, but she was so freaking cool. She was so nice and she has the most immaculate taste. She sent me so many books that I need to read. I wrote them down. She just has the most incredible taste because we were talking about the same type of books and she's read so many of the books that I loved. Not only Eleanor Oliphant, she also loved Educated. She hasn't read Black Cake though and I told her about Black Cake and it was the most wholesome, beautiful experience I've ever had. But the only thing is, I realized at the end, because she got off before us, I didn't get her name or number. Ah, I hate that so much. She was like an older woman. She had three kids that are like my age, but still, she was so cool and so nice and just so well read. It was just such a beautiful, wholesome moment. And so I had to give her my book and I was so happy I met her, so happy, because we were having a train wreck of a day. <laughs> Not only did we miss our initial train this morning, but then when we got on that second train, 
I left all my stuff on the on the bench outside so we had to get off that train at the next stop then we had to take an uber to the city then when we went to go ice skate there was no ice skating skates left so we couldn't ice skate and then it was packed at Rockefeller Center and everywhere we turned there's something else chaotic going on and we were just like can we have one decent part of the day and it turned out that the end of our day was the best part of the day so that was so cool. She was so nice. If you're watching this, thank you so much for sitting next to us. You were so cool. And I just absolutely loved our conversation. You were just like the best person ever. Now that is it. This was a chaotic ride, but thank you so much for following along. Thank you for watching until the end. And if you did watch to the end, well, Merry freaking Christmas, because this is a Barnes & Noble gift card for $25. Whoever uses it first, you get to keep it. And I hope you and your family have a healthy and happy holiday. I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Okay, this is a side note for the people who care. After that, our day just kept getting worse. It was like good, bad, good, bad. It was like a Sour Patch Kid kind of day. So once she got off the train, right, we kept going to our stop, which was like three stops after hers. And then when we tried to get off on our stop, we got up and the doors wouldn't open. So we were like, what the heck? And we were like, okay, maybe we're not actually here. Maybe there was like a technical difficulty thing. But then maybe the train started moving and we were just like, <laughs> So we had to get up on the next stop again and when we got off on the next stop It's so late at this point. It's like 7 p.m And then we run to another train because we see a train on the other side of the tracks And so I'm thinking if it's on the other side of the tracks, we're going this way in this train This one has to be going this way Baby it started moving this way and we were just like um <laughs> At this point, we've walked seven miles, 16,000 steps. We are tired, hungry, and we wanna go home. And now we're another stop further from where we have to stop. And then when we get off that train, we just decide we're gonna order an Uber and just go home. Just go to our, pick up our car at our train stop and just go home. And while we're waiting for our Uber, I kid you not, you are not gonna believe me, but I swear to God on my grandma that this happened. We stopped, we ordered our Uber, <laughs> I know you're not gonna believe me. We ordered our Uber and at the point where we are, there's a road here, but it stops. It's a dead end and you have to turn around and go. But there's no reason to turn around unless you're in this store here because there's another road here and then it goes into this neighborhood and people just pass by, right? While we are waiting on our Uber, a red car drives by us and he had a huge white beard he was bigger and he had the Santa Claus glasses. I know you're not gonna believe me, but believe me. And he looks at us and I was like, wow, that guy looks like Santa Claus. And then I noticed he was wearing the Santa Claus outfit. And then my brother was like, wait, is that? And we were just all looking. Santa Claus turns around at that little cul-de-sac thing at that dead end. When he's driving by, he waves at us. We just saw Santa Claus. Um, I'm 26 years old and I still freaked out. I was so excited. There was no communication. There was no reason for him to do that. Like, why was Santa Claus driving? And the fact that we saw him before the holidays preparing, like, that was crazy. I could have followed him, asked him for the gifts that y'all wanted, but we just thought that was too much. But that was crazy. That was just a perfect way to end this chaotic day. And I felt like I had to tell you. So if you care, thank you for staying to the end. I love you so much. And I hope you and your family have a healthy and happy holiday. I'll see you in the next video. Mwah! Merry Christmas! <laughs>